Jesus name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to start off tonight by just saying two words uh, have come up in me uh, repeatedly for the last two weeks. And those two words are the word soaking and the words morphing. Soaking and morphing. And I believe that the Lord wants his body to begin to soak in his presence. Soak with praise and worship. Soak in his, in his the revelation of his word. Just soaking in, in him. That we need him. We need more of him every single day that we live on this earth. We need more of the Lord. And you get that by soaking in him. You don't get that by watching the news. You don't get that by re reading Reader's Digest. You don't get that by any other way except being in the presence of Almighty God. And so I just want to soak more. And I'm, I'm saying these things just to encourage you. And, and just before Brother Fred comes, uh, with the message for tonight, but we're going to soak in the Lord. And then the word morphing, I love that word, uh, is comes from metamorphosis. It's what happens to that caterpillar uh, in the process of being made into a butterfly. And when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, that word transfigured in the Greek is from the word, the Greek word, metamorphosis. Also, when we're transformed by the renewing of our mind, that word transformed is metamorphosis. And so the Lord is wanting us to be morphed. He's wanting us to become more and more like him so that the world sees Jesus in us. When we walk into a place, when we go where our family uh, is or when we go where a, another group is that when we walk in that we will shine and we will look like Jesus and there are some people that will never go into a church building they will never go into a structure and tonight this message is all about retrieval and remember, we're on a series. We're still on the same series of life-giving ministry. Without the life of Jesus, you have nothing to give. Because that's what people need. They need life. And life is in Jesus Christ. And so tonight, this session is entitled Retrieval and Restoration. Those two things, R&R, &R, retrieval and restoration. And I know that some of you identify, especially with those two words, those of you that are working with your family right now. I know that uh, Lisa uh, from, from California, uh, she's, she's working with her family, her family um, has heard and is hearing of uh, the word of God. Even her brother uh, in the Philippines is, is hearing the word. And so I believe that all of us will be not only encouraged by this word, but also receive direction uh, uh, from this word. And what is your next step? What are you to be doing? And and so we have new faces, and we, we thank the Lord for that. And so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. As I said, the title of the message tonight is Retrieval and Restoration. Uh, we're going to focus primarily on retrieval tonight, retrieving that which is lost. And that includes things, and it also includes uh, people that, that have been lost. Uh, perhaps family members. And, uh, but we also want to at least introduce the concept of restoration today. Uh, and that will 
be developed further in the, the next time that we meet together. So retrieval is going and bringing back that which is lost. Uh, it's a very important concept, and I know that we've all lost things, and we have uh, people that have uh, lost, they've been lost, uh, family members, friends, uh, relationships, um, finances, all, all of us have experienced losses. And so we're going to talk about how to retrieve what has been lost. Uh, so retrieval is go get it and bring it back. And this is a supernatural process I'm talking about tonight because the overall series is life giving ministry. And we know from John chapter six, verse 63, that it is the spirit that gives life. He is the one who gives life. He's the life giver. Mm -hmm. And so ministry, life-giving ministry, uh, has in the core of it the Holy Spirit. Because the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that makes alive. The spirit quickens. And that brings alive something that uh, had been dead. It may have been like a seed. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say you, you take an acorn uh, or, or an uh, olive uh, uh, seed, uh, peach seed, avocado seed. You take that seed and it can you can set it on your table and it'll sit there for the rest of your life. And you can just look at it and, and think <laughs> what an amazing thing it is. But for it to quicken, there has to be something applied to it. And we know what those are in the natural, but it's the same thing. There are people who have seeds deposited in them and yet they have not been quickened. And so we have to do this. We have to go where the people are. There's a lot of people that need what you have and they may never come across the threshold of your church building. Uh, and so a lot of people are just sitting in their church building thinking, well, if they decide they want what we have, uh, we've got something wonderful here, just let them come. But that's not the way uh, mm. it happens in the kingdom. You know, uh, the disciples of Jesus asked him, what's really important in the kingdom? He said, who's the greatest? What's the most important thing in God's kingdom? And he gave them three things, three answers. And uh, uh, some people just think about the first one, but you know, he didn't stop answering the question after he had mentioned one thing. The first one was to come as a little child. So it's mm -hmm. humility is number one. Then the second one was retrieval. And the third one was restoration. Ooh! What's really important mm -hmm. uh, in the kingdom, in God's kingdom, what's really important? Now, this may not be important in your church congregation, but this is important in the kingdom and there's nothing more important than these three things jesus said that's what jesus said Go on again. humility and retrieval and restoration and rest retrieval is going and bringing back that which is lost and restoration is uh bringing uh something that has been broken or diminished bring it back to its place and to its rightful condition to its oh, rightful yeah. place and rightful condition. That's restoration. Jesus said there's nothing more important than these three things. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And so we won't, mm -hmm. I know that we've all lost things. And so we're going to jump right into rest, retrieval to begin with. And the first one is a story I love. It, it's about an axe head that got lost in the river. Uh, and, and an axe head is a, uh, let's say made out of iron and it's a lot heavier than water and will not float. And so uh, Elisha uh, was with some uh, young prophets and they were building a facility, a, a, a building that they could uh, uh, be in and, and be taught the word of God and live and eat and all of that. And, and they, the, so they were out there in this new area and they were chopping down trees to make uh, beams and lumber to build this facility. And uh, one of them cried out in uh, 2 Kings 6, verses 5 through 7, and he said, uh, Master, I, I've lost the axe head, and it was borrowed. 
Mm, now, mm, the reason mm. this is such an important story for all of us is that he had done something he wasn't supposed to do. Because in Deuteronomy 15, God said, mm. I'm going to bless you. Oh, you'll lend to others, but you will not borrow. Well, here's a guy. He knew immediately he had sinned. Uh, he wasn't right. Uh, he could not unborrow that ex head. <laughs> he had borrowed it. And when, even though God said, don't do that, he borrowed it and then it went into the river. Now, Elisha did something that was really interesting. You, you think, well, um, maybe they should put on their scuba gear and just go in there and look for it. But they didn't have scuba gear then. And, and so what did, what did Elisha do? He, he, he cut down a branch. He cut down a branch, but he, this is a symbol of Jesus and the cross. Oh, what mm. Elisha did was a, was a forewarning uh, and bringing back the cross into mm. that time period. Mm. Because Jesus said in Luke 23, when, when uh, he was on trial before Pilate, uh, Pilate uh, said, now, what do you want me to do with him? He, I cannot find that he has done anything. There are no grounds. Uh, for him to be have a death sentence there are no grounds this man didn't do anything uh, to warrant a death sentence but the crowds cried out crucify him crucify him crucify him and jesus said if they've done this to a green tree what will they do to a dry one see he referred to himself as a green tree now elisha mm, saw it in the spirit no, and, and he brought it back he brought back the cross because mm, the cross, mm, he was going to be cut down. Mm, mm, and, and that tree, that green tree was going to be cut down. And so Elisha cut down that green tree, the branch off of it, and he put it in the water. He, he's introducing Christ into the situation because the young man needs a miracle. But the young man cannot uh, clean himself up because he's disobeyed what God told him to do. He has borrowed an ax, and the ax head flew off while he was... Uh, chopping a tree so he cannot unborrow the axe head a and yet God's going to give him a miracle right here because of the cross and the work of the cross not because he had cleaned himself up and unborrowed the axe head no he couldn't do that but the cross covers the cross covers you co covers your situation you cannot clean yourself up a and the sins that you may say well I i've got sin in my life but i need a miracle well praise god there's the cross and the cross is going to is going to cover mm -hmm. your situation uh, with the blood of jesus christ and apply christ to your situation so you're eligible for a miracle that's what Hallelujah. i'm saying tonight. Hallelujah. and you might say well I may have some uh, sin that I don't even know about. I need healing in my body, but I, I don't know. I can't I haven't cleaned myself up. I've still got some things that are hanging on to me. Well, now, let me tell you, this gives us great encouragement, this, this uh, passage here, because he could not unborrow the ax head, but he got a miracle anyway when he applied the cross, when the cross was applied and there was a, something supernatural because I'm call, talking about retrieving mm -hmm. what has been lost retrieving supernaturally this is not about going into the river and finding the, an axe head which they couldn't do which mm -hmm. they couldn't do but with the cross and uh, introduce the cross to your situation and the miracles happen uh, glory yeah. to god yeah. retreat i love this mm -hmm. i love this passage mm -hmm. because this shows we're all eligible mm -hmm. for a miracle we're all eligible for healing for our body. And maybe we haven't cleaned up everything. And But I, I suggest you confess your sins. You've got sins, confess them. But but if the things you don't even know about, and don't give up. Don't, don't give up on God and just sit down. There, You can still get a miracle when you apply the cross. Hallelujah. And the Jesus Christ, let Jesus Christ come forth in your situation. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. That's mm -hmm. encouraging to me. I hope it's encouraging to you. What we're talking about here is going and getting what is lost. Hallelujah. It's important. It's a part of our ministry. It's a, a lot of what we mm -hmm. have done. We've gone and gotten a lot of people. We've gotten them in, in the Bible. Uh, 
talks about it's the spirit that gives life. And so we've carried the life-giving ministry into the prisons and the jails and the drug rehab facilities. And the crack houses. And the crack houses and on the, and on the streets. Uh, I'm thinking about one woman uh, named Gloria. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had a, a, a heroin addiction hundreds of dollars every day she had you know, five hundred dollars a she day had to have hundreds of dollars every day and this was several years ago to buy heroin and, and she got to an intersection one day and, and uh, she said uh, to the lord well, she knew she was dying for one thing said i'm gonna die if you don't heal me if you don't deliver me from these drugs and he dr delivered her at that intersection she didn't even have any withdrawals she was instantly delivered. And, and so she ministered with us and we ministered with her. And wh what she did, uh, she started a uh, drug rehab facility herself, but she didn't just put a sign in the yard and, and say, oh, if you're a drug addict and you need help, you come here. No, what she did, she went out. Yes. Went out to the crack houses, to, to the, the drug dealers and said, I, I went want, with her. I want these people. I want this person person. I want that person. I'm going to bring them out and I'm going to present Jesus Christ to them. And I'm going to take them to my drug uh, uh, rehab facility and, and uh, clean them up. Glory to God. She, there were lots of people that she retrieved out of the streets, out of the, out of the, uh, out of the gutters. gutters. That's what God has told us to do. Go into the uh, streets, the highways and byways. highways and byways and compel them to come into the kingdom. Uh, a lot of people are just waiting on to come into their uh, church facility uh, because they've got all of those great programs, but there's a lot of people that will never come into your church facility. Well, you've got to go out and get them, and that's what we see there in 2 Kings uh, chapter 6 about the axe head. There are, you can have miracles uh, and bring back what is lost. Perhaps, and I don't want you to think about as we're ministering tonight and think I want you to think about what is it that you have lost? What have you personally lost? Uh, is it a relationship? Is it uh, your health? Is it uh, uh, a loved one? It, it, what is it? What is it? A relationship? What, what is the, what have you lost? You think about it as we go along tonight. You know, the second uh, passage I want to talk about, and I have uh, three examples I want to talk about out of the Bible and give lots of personal examples as we go. But uh, uh, the second example in the Bible uh, is 1 Samuel 30. Now, David uh, had several warriors and they had been going out and fighting the enemies of uh, Israel. And, and then uh, one night, they, uh, one time they went out and they came back. And when they came back, uh, they were there in the land of the Philistines, and uh, the city uh, that they were had their families in, the city, when they, they were coming back to the city, they saw that it was burned. And I'm talking about 1 uh, Samuel 30. And, and, and smoke was going up, and they came back to their city, and their wives and their children were gone. They'd been kidnapped. Uh, all of their possessions had been stolen and their homes had been burned. And now the people were upset at uh, David and they wanted to stone him and they all cried out. They just cried and wept about their families being gone, their possessions being gone, their homes being gone. And, and, and then here's a critical verse. Here's a real critical verse. David encouraged himself and he strengthened himself Oh, oh, maybe you've lost. Maybe you've lost. This is a critical point. This mm. is the this is the turning point in, in this story. When he encouraged himself and strengthened himself, I'm talking about First Samuel 30, verse five. And then, and only then, did he begin to inquire of the Lord after he had strengthened himself. Up until then, he was just weeping and crying and carrying on. All of his people were carrying on. But when he strengthened himself, this is a critical, critical point I want to make. You know, Hebrews says, uh, take joyfully the spoiling of, of, our, your goods. of your goods. Take joyfully 
the spoiling of you. He, it says of uh, uh, Hebrews 10, he said, go out to the prisons and help the prisoners and, and take joyfully the spoiling of your goods, what's been stolen. So joy here is very important. I mean, and, and, and what joy is, it's the strength of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It's the joy of the Lord that is your strength. That's so important. And, and you may be, oh, well, have a real bad uh, situation. Well, strengthen yourself uh, mm -hmm. with the joy of the Lord and encourage yourself. Uh, you, you, the time of weeping is over. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's something uh, that comes in the morning. Yeah, His, mercy, yes, His mercies yes. are new, new every, every morning. morning. It's time to mm -hmm. rejoice. You know, uh, Paul wrote it and said, rejoice. And again, mm -hmm. I, I say, rejoice. rejoice. I guess they didn't take it seriously yeah. the first time. <laughs> so they had, he had to say it again, rejoice. And again, yeah, I, I say, say rejoice. rejoice. So rejoicing is critical in retrieving what has been lost. And so when he uh, strengthened himself and when he took courage and strength, then he inquired of the Lord and he said, shall I pursue them? See, there's a big army mm -hmm. that came through. He just had a few uh, soldiers with him, few warriors with him. As a big army came through, they, they just uh, uh, would sack a whole city and burn it and take all the people. And the Lord said, pursue them. And he said, well, I'll, will I overtake them? And the Lord said, you will overtake them and re Cover everyone. Woo! Retrieve everyone. Do you, like, do you like that? Retrieve everyone. Maybe you've had uh, some loved ones uh, that need retrieving. You know, I've had uh, uh, two, uh, a nephew and a niece uh, that have been have spent a lot of time in prison. I, the, my niece uh, is about 40 years old, and she spent most of her adult life in prison. Most of her adult life in prison. But today, Glory to God. She's mm -hmm. no longer lost. There, there's been a retrieval in, in her oh, life. Yeah. And uh, she's serving the Lord and she's going to college. And, and this is somebody that didn't finish high school uh, and went into prison as a teenager. But, uh, but now she's uh, in college uh, and uh, studying to be a counselor in drug rehab facilities because she has had a lot of experience uh, with drugs and about, uh, about people being on drugs. And, and that's somebody that there was a, a life in her. She accepted Jesus Christ. Uh, she did that a long time ago, but praise God that it came to life. You know, the life-giving ministry is the Holy Spirit and the Spirit brings it's that alive. seed alive. Uh, mm. You know, the Hebrews 10, as I said, it says, go help the Go help the uh, prisoners. Uh, Sherry and I have spent mm -hmm. a lot of years uh, in prison ministry, uh, spent a lot of time. And when we go in there uh, and we bring life to them mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's a quickening inside of them, there's, there's a seed uh, that has been in them. And, and one example in particular, I remember we were ministering and, and, uh, and, and I asked the people, this is after we'd been ministering uh, for several weeks, and I asked the people, uh, who has a prophetic call on their life? And there were 16 men in that uh, meeting that day, 16 men in prison that had been running from their calling. They All were, sitting on the front row. They were on the first row, uh, shoulder to shoulder. And none of them knew mm -hmm. that the next person, but, but they were drawn by the Holy Spirit to sit on the first row that night. They didn't know what I was going to talk about, but they knew that we carried the Holy Spirit and, and that we had life-giving ministry. And so they were drawn, drawn there uh, to sit on the first row. And then when I said, who has a prophetic calling? 16 men on the first row got up and acknowledged that they had a prophetic calling. Amen. Because what Amen. had happened, see, these men had been running from their calling. Uh, they had a seed within them, but it had not been quickened. But when you stay around the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Spirit. will quicken Ooh, and bring I alive that. that seed within them. Oh, I and love they, that word. And they could acknowledge then that they had a prophetic calling on their life. That's when the word leaps on the inside of you. That's, Hallelujah. And that's a joyful time. That, that's a time when you have great joy. When you can, when you see men 
uh, standing and proclaiming that, yes, I do have a prophetic calling, or I do have an evangelistic calling, or I, I am a pastor. I just have run from God all these years, but I'm, I'm going to turn and, and, and follow the Lord and fulfill my purpose on the earth. That, that's a time of great joy, retrieval. See, there's a great joy when you're retrieving that which was lost. Uh, there's another example I want to give, and, and, and sometimes it's just things that are lost. Uh, one time, uh, Sherry and I had uh, uh, had a repair on our car, and it was $300, and we felt like we had been be beat out of that $300 because I, I told the uh, person at the uh, 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 garage where they were going to fix our car, I said, he says, it's going to be more expensive if we get a new part, but I can get a cheaper, uh, I'd say, what do you call it? Reconstructed or whatever. Yeah, it's, our, it's been redone. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I said, no, I want a new part. I want a new part because this is a relatively new car and, and I want to keep it uh, in good shape. And so I don't want one that's just been rebuilt. I don't want to rebuild. Re part. Rebuild, yeah. I, I want a new part, <laughs> and I pay. And he said, "You're just gonna, it's gonna cost you more. You're gonna have to pay this three hundred dollars more uh, for this part." And I said, "Okay, I will do it." I paid him three hundred dollars, and we went and got our car, and we brought it home. I opened up the hood on it. I looked. And there on that part was sitting there and it said a rebuilt part. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, I've, I've had $300 stolen from me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, Sherry and I walked around that uh, car that day and we called it forth. We called back seven and folds. Fold. See, we'd lost $300. We called it back seven fold. Uh, so sometimes uh, when you're retrieving things uh, or getting things restored, you have to know by the Holy Spirit what kind of restoration uh, he's going to give you. And is it going to be a one-fold restoration? You know, uh, some people get a one-fold. David had a one-fold return on all, all. He got all his people back and all those possessions. That, that's a one-fold. But, uh, you know, Zechariah in chapter 9 talked about a double restoration, double, uh, double free trouble. Uh, Job got double. Uh, mm -hmm. restoration double and so are you satisfied with a one-fold return uh, or a double a return two-fold or a seven-fold well hallelujah the Holy spirit told us to claim a seven-fold return if the, if the thief be caught uh he has to re, uh, pay sevenfold so that was what we were operating on and uh and and then there was a time just a few days later than that and there was a check coming to me because a man had asked me to do something. I did it. And uh, the Holy Spirit said to me, that's the sevenfold return. Amen. Amen. You, know, you know how much that check was for coming in the mail. And I never put the two together, but it's $2,100. <laughs> so we lost the 300, but we got sevenfold return. <laughs> So we walked around that car because that's what the Holy Spirit told us to do. We've got a sevenfold return. Sometimes you've got things that are lost and, and sometimes you just want those back. But sometimes there's a payment that you got to a request on it. And sometimes it's a double, a double return or sometimes it's a sevenfold return. So whatever it is, you need to know by the Holy Spirit because what I'm talking about tonight is the operation the operation of the Holy Spirit. This is not something you can do in the natural. You know, like John 6, uh, 63 said, it's the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. In, in other words, your natural intellect is not going to do any good. Or your natural abilities or even your good looks are not going to do any good. It's going to be the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's the Amen. Holy Spirit. Uh, and so go out and retrieve what has been lost. Well, the, some of the things the Holy Spirit has told us to retrieve have been the goodness of God and the, mm -hmm. and the riches of his kingdom. Amen. So it's not just natural things uh, that perhaps we've let the goodness of God, uh, we've let it fall and we haven't held it up because everything starts with the goodness of God. We overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to, to keep hold of things like the goodness of God and the riches of his kingdom. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Count it all joy. So maybe you've lost some things. I'm sure every person here has lost something you can think about. And it's time to retrieve it. Maybe you've got uh, a sibling that's gone off and uh, gone away from the Lord. You know, I had a son that uh, was uh, into drugs, uh, into uh, very bad drugs, and, and for, uh, for many years. And But in the night seasons, in the nights, I would hear him crying to me. Mm -hmm. I would hear my real son crying out to me. And I would get up and I would pace the floors and I would pray and intercede for him. But let me tell you, uh, a few years ago, three or four years ago, uh, he got clean from drugs and he's been, he's continued to be clean and he has a job and he's had a promotion on his job and he's got uh, approval to buy a house and he's looking for a house that he can own. And I tell you that, that that's all a miracle because he's a person mm -hmm. uh, being on drugs for all those years. Uh, he, he, he would be able to rent something, but he couldn't keep it. And so he'd get ejected uh, evicted. evicted out of those houses. And you can imagine he had a negative uh, um, rating as far as He had credit. no credit, no credit. credit Zero. Zero uh, credit. Less than nothing. And uh, probably had lots of things against him with credit. But today he has an outstanding credit rating because God has restored, has restored. And God's going to restore everything for him. It's amazing what all is being restored in his life. That's what I'm talking about tonight is going out and retrieving that which is lost, lost. and restoring. And so these two things work together. And I obviously can't get to, to the restoration and cover restoration like I want to, to do uh, tonight. So we'll carry this into the next message. But these two things work together. Sometimes you have a responsibility to go and get what is lost and bring it back. Uh, but that's, that's not the end of the story. It needs to be restored. It needs to be brought to its rightful place and its rightful condition. And, and let me tell you, you, you might say, well, that, that's going back to the way it was. Well, but <laughs> God will take things to better than they were. Yeah, I mean. Uh, that's what I'm believing for, for you, for God to restore things to a better place and a better condition mm -hmm. than, than they were. And uh, the third example from the Bible that I want to just mention briefly, and this is from uh, John chapter, I mean, Matthew chapter 18, and, and it talks about uh, a sheep that got lost. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and uh, we call it the parable of the lost sheep, but it's really the parable of the shepherd who lost the sheep yeah. because it was, it's all <laughs> about the shepherd. The shepherd uh, has a hundred sheep in Matthew 18, has a hundred sheep and one of them got lost and wandered off. You know how sheep are. <laughs> they just wander off sometimes. <laughs> and if the shepherd's not right there watching over them uh, and they get a little break from the shepherd, they, well, they, wander, yeah, they off, wander off. They go in their own direction. Uh, and let me tell you that I, I see Jesus going and, and getting mm -hmm. that lost sheep. So this is not really telling us the story about the sheep so much as the shepherd. He leaves the 90 and nine and he doesn't leave them in a dangerous place. I believe it's, it's like uh, when David said, uh, shall I pursue and shall I overtake? I, I believe uh, this shepherd was uh, in, in uh, communication with the father and with the spirit and saying, should I pursue uh, this one that's lost? And and shall I overtake it? And, and he was getting the response, yes, pursue it. Yes, overtake it. You shall retrieve it. You shall retrieve it. So he went out there. He wasn't concerned about the 99 because he'd had the word from the Lord. Oh, word hallelujah. from the Lord was pursue it, overtake it, mm. and, and retrieve it. Mm. And he got the sheep. And he, oh, how joyful he oh, was yes, on he the is. hills of uh, Israel, oh, how joyful he was. This is what about retrieval. The important factor here is joy. Keep your joy. See, if if the devil can't get your joy, joy. he can't keep, keep your, your goods. goods. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. It's about keep your joy. Count it all joy. I don't care what you've been through. I know you've been through a lot, but don't, but don't lose your joy. That's, uh, that's your strength. That's the way to get it back to get your goods back count it all joy uh 
you know, when when you've lost something, count it joy uh, because you know you're, it's coming back. It's coming back to you. Don't Hallelujah. let the steal your joy. If you don't let him steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming Hallelujah. today. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to turn it over this year. Praise the name of Jesus. I know that many of you um, relate to this message tonight. Uh, that you have you have gone out and you have retrieved uh, those things that have been lost and and so tonight this is just a, an encouragement to you. It's saying you know you're like sick them to to the dog. You know it's just a you know you know go for it. Uh, and and if you've stopped retrieving, uh, you know I I love golden retrievers. That's one of my favorite uh, animals, and I, I love when they go after those birds and and retrieve them and bring them back. And and you know there are there are many wounded birds that that are out there uh, in the world, and that that we come across. Uh, and, and even in our daily lives, I know Haley works in the school. Do you still work in the school, Haley? Okay. Well, I know that there are children. There are children that come from homes that are that are not what they need to be. You know, those children need retrieval. Uh, they need to be brought into the the goodness of God. They need to be brought into into the kingdom you know, where there's safety, and those of you that have gone through abuse, those of you that have had hard times, you know, that, that retrieval process uh, is so important. Our son, Jason, uh, there was a contract out on his life, and I had a dream a few days before he was put in jail, and that dream, uh, I was walking up a hill with a bunch of other people to a graveyard, and in the casket uh, was my son. And I knew that, that, that his, his life uh, was on the line and that he had a short time uh, to, uh, to live. And, um, and, and so I began to pray and, and ask the Lord to put him in a safe place uh, to get him away from those that were trying to, to take him out. And uh, because he was running with a with a with a mean crowd, uh, with a, a group of drug dealers that uh, were were bad news, and um, uh, but about three three days later, he was picked up by the police and he was put in jail, and it was in jail that he turned his life back to Jesus, back to Him, and. And, and since then, you know, the Lord has been um, teaching him and, and revealing his goodness to him. And, and, and so I am so thankful uh, for that retrieval process. Uh, and and the, if you have, uh, hey, Brother Jack, if you have any, anything that needs to be retrieved, uh, then this, is, this message is for all of us. Yeah, it is for all of us as leaders in the body of Christ, but also individually. If there's something that the, the enemy has stolen from us that we can go forth and retrieve, uh, then that's what we need to be. Uh, that's what we need to be doing. 